Welcome to EME 105, Study Section 1, Overview of Management. Introduction. The focus of this study session is to make you understand the overview of management from different point of views. We shall discuss perspectives of management, that is, arguments for management as a science and as an art. Clarification on the perspectives will be made as well. Based on the different definitions, we shall discuss features of management. Our discussion will revolve around things that we do daily or things that happen in our environment every day. The overview of management will cover the area of its concept, the arguments of two schools of thought on management, their opinions and the different features of management. Learning Outcomes for Study Section 1 At the end of this study session, you should be able to discuss the concept of management, discuss the arguments of two schools of thought on management, express their opinions on the arguments of the two schools of thought, highlight features of management. The Concept of Management Management is a universal phenomenon. It is a very popular and widely used term. You should know that all organizations, business, political, cultural or social are involved in management because it is the management which helps and directs the various efforts towards a definite purpose. According to Harold Coons, Management is an art of getting things done through and with the two people in formally organized groups. It is an art of creating an environment in which people can perform and individuals can cooperate towards attainment of group goals. According to F. W. Taylor, management is an art of knowing what to do, when to do and see that it is done in the best and cheapest way. Management is a purposive activity. It is something that directs group efforts towards the attainment of certain predetermined goals. It is the process of working with and through others to effectively achieve the goals of the organization by efficiently using limited resources in the changing world. Of course, these goals may vary from one enterprise to another, e.g., for one enterprise, it may be launching of new products by conducting market surveys, and for other, it may be profit maximization by minimizing costs. Management as a discipline refers to that branch of knowledge which is connected to study of principles and practices of basic administration. It specifies certain code of conduct to be followed by the management and also various methods for managing resources efficiently. Any branch of knowledge that fulfills following two requirements is known as discipline. There must be scholars and thinkers who communicate relevant knowledge through research and publications. Knowledge should be formally imparted by education and training programs. Since management satisfies both these problems, therefore it qualifies to be a discipline, though it is comparatively a new discipline, but it is growing at a faster pace. 
Do you have any idea what management is? You can make an attempt by defining management in your own terms and compare it with what we have below. According to Till Henman, management has three different meanings. These one, management as a noun, refers to a group of managers. Management is an individual or a group of individuals that accept responsibilities to run an organization. They plan, organize, direct, and control all the essential activities of the organization. Management does not do the work themselves. They motivate others to do the work and coordinate, that is, bring together all the work for achieving the objectives of the organization. Two, management as a discipline refers to the subject of management. Three, management as a process refers to the functions of management, that is, planning, organizing, directing, controlling, etc. Management is simply referred to as a process of relating human resources to achieve the goals in an organization. It means realization of organizational goals is very central to the concept of management. In another definition, management is viewed as planning, organizing, leading and controlling the effort of organization members and of using all other organizational resources to achieve stated organizational goals. Management brings together all six M's, that is, men and women, money, machines, materials, methods, and markets. They use these resources for achieving the objectives of the organization, such as high sales, maximum profits, business expansion, etc. Kindly compare your definitions with the definitions given above. Are there similarities in keywords? Could you redefine the term management in a better way based on the tips in the definitions offered above? Management as an art or a science. There are two opposing schools of thought on management. One of the schools views management as an art while the other school conceives management as a science. Management as an art. The school of thought that refers to management as an art conceives administration like art. The school is of the opinion that management belongs to those with natural gifts, traits, and abilities for it, that management is an inherent trait and it cannot be blended through formal training. The main emphasis is that good managers are born. They have the potentials to be successful as managers or entrepreneurs without having been specifically educated for the profession. Management as a science. This school of thought argues that management relates to the capacity to use existing organized knowledge in the practice. That management is a technology, a matter of applying management principles and rules to the solution of management or organizational problems. The emphasis is that good managers are not born but are trained on the use of scientific approach, relevant principles, theories and techniques of management to achieve the objectives of the organization. Therefore, they claim that management has developed certain principles, laws and generalizations which are universal in nature and can be applied under similar circumstance or environment. Scholars of scientific school of thought like Frederick W. Taylor, Henry Gant, Henry Fayol, Frank and Lillian Gibbert believed that management process could be translated into a set of methodologies and techniques which could be learned and communicated. Thus, the science of managing is not as exact as in the physical or biological sciences. It is crude and inexact because many variables which managers come in terms with are variable, complex and dynamic. The submissions of the two schools are these, management as an art and as a science 
are complementary in the practice of management. Some aspects of management are essentially art while some other aspects have become more scientific in orientation, e.g. the use of computer programming in decision making and the likes. Therefore, we can conclude by saying that management is an art of managing people and resources. It is also a science of using tested principles and applying scientifically based management theories. It implies that a professional manager must be well versed with both the art and science of management. Features of management We can now go through the features of management. This are management is an activity concerned with guiding human and physical resources such that organizational goals can be achieved. Nature of management can be highlighted as management is goal-oriented. The success of any management activity is assessed by its achievement of the predetermined goals or objective. Management is a purposeful activity. It is a tool which helps use of human and physical resources to fulfill the predetermined goals. For example, the goal of an enterprise is maximum consumer satisfaction by producing quality goods and at reasonable prices. This can be achieved by employing efficient persons and making better use of scarce resources. Management integrates human, physical and financial resources. In an organization, human beings work with non-human resources like machines, materials, financial assets, buildings, etc. Management integrates human efforts to those resources. It brings harmony among the human, physical and financial resources. Management is continuous. Management is an ongoing process. It involves continuous handling of problems and issues. It is concerned with identifying the problem and taking appropriate steps to solve it, e.g. The target of a company is maximum production. For achieving this target, various policies have to be framed, but this is not the end. Marketing and advertising is also to be done. For these policies have to be again framed. Hence, this is an ongoing process. Management is all pervasive. Management is required in all types of organizations, whether it is political, social, cultural or business because it helps and directs various efforts towards a definite purpose. Thus clubs, hospitals, political parties, colleges, hospitals, business, firms all require management. Management is a continuous process. Management is a process that involves four main functions. These are planning, organizing, directing and controlling. The manager has to plan and organize all the activities. He has to give proper directions to his subordinates. He also has to control all the activities. These functions have to be carried out continuously by a manager. Getting things done through people. The managers get the work done through the subordinates. It therefore implies that a favorable work environment has to be created and maintained for better performance. Result-oriented science and art Management is a result-oriented because it gives a lot of importance to goal achievement. Management always wants to get the best result at all times. Complex and multidisciplinary in nature Management is a very complex job because it has to get the work done through people. It has to manage people that have different emotions, feelings, aspirations, etc. Similarly, the same persons may have different emotions at different times. Therefore, management uses knowledge from many different subjects such as economics, information technology, psychology, sociology, etc. Therefore, it is multidisciplinary in nature, a group and not an individual activity. Management is not an individual activity but a group activity. It uses group effort to achieve desirable objectives. 
follows established principles or rules. Management follows established principles such as division of work, discipline, unity of command, etc. These principles help to prevent and solve the problems in the organization. Aided but not replaced by computers, with the introduction of technological devices, all managers use computers in their daily routine. Computers help the managers to take accurate decisions. Thus, management is aided but not replaced by computers. Situational in nature. Management makes plans, policies, and decisions according to the situation. It changes its style according to the situation. It uses different plans, policies, decisions, and styles for different situations. Both an art and science. Management is result-oriented. Therefore, it is an art. Management conducts continuous research. Thus, it is also a science. Uses a professional approach in work. Managers use a professional approach for getting the work done from their subordinates. They delegate, that is, give authority to their subordinates. They ask their subordinates to give suggestions for improving their work. They also encourage subordinates to take the initiative. Initiative means to do the right thing at the right time without being guided or helped by the superior. Dynamic in nature. Management is dynamic in nature. That is, management is creative and innovative. An organization will survive and succeed only if it is dynamic. It must continuously bring in new and creative ideas, new products, and new product features. Functions of management The functions of management are common to all alike, whether a business firm or a non-business firm. Management's primary function is the satisfaction of the stakeholders. This typically involves making a profit for the shareholders, creating valued products at a reasonable cost for customers, and providing rewarding employment opportunities for employees. This can be achieved only when management accomplishes its functions. A diagrammatic representation of the functions of management which are planning. Planning means looking ahead and chalking out future courses of action to be followed taking into consideration available and prospective human and physical resources. It is a systematic activity which determines when, how, and who is going to perform a specific job. It is rightly said, well, plan is half done. According to Coons and Old Donnell, planning is deciding in advance what to do, how to do, and who is to do it. Planning bridges the gap between where we are to, where we want to go, it makes possible things to occur which would not otherwise occur. Planning requires administration to assess appropriate course of action to attain the company's goals and objectives. Organizing Organizing is the function of management which follows planning. It is a function in which the synchronization and combination of human, physical, and financial resources take place. All the three resources are important to get results. Therefore, organizational function helps in achievement of results which in fact is important for the functioning of a concern. Hence, a manager always has to organize in order to get results. Staffing The managerial function of staffing involves money the organization structure through proper and effective selection, appraisal, and development of the personnel to fill the roles assigned to the employer workforce. Staffing pertains to recruitment, selection, development, and compensation of subordinates. Nature of Staffing Function Staffing is an important managerial function. Staffing is a continuous activity. The basis of staffing function is efficient management of personnel. Staffing helps in placing right men at the right job. 
Staffing is performed by all managers depending upon the nature of business, size of the company, qualifications and skills of managers, etc. Directing. This is a process in which the managers instruct, guide and oversee the performance of the workers to achieve predetermined goals. Planning. Organizing, staffing has got no importance if direction function does not take place.